guys. So today I wanted to talk about something um, that I've been thinking about. There's a phrase that's been rattling around in my brain. Uh, and it's simply in the waiting. Um, I don't, you probably heard it. There's a song out. I think it's by Vertical Worship. Um, song out right now. And it's called Yes, I Will. We actually sing it sometimes on Sundays. Uh, but there's a line in the song and it says, In the waiting... I'm not going to sing it for you. <laughs> in my head, I hear it singing, but I'm not going to do that. So the, the, it says, In the waiting, the same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. It's a catchy tune. Uh, and I've been really grooving to that song, actually. I just sing it around the house. I'm not going to sing it for you right now. Uh, so what I want to talk about is our attitude in the waiting. Um, have you guys ever heard this saying? I bet you have. It's really popular. And it says, good things come to those who wait. <laughs> uh, and while that saying is not entirely true, it's also not really far off. Uh, waiting on its own, though, doesn't necessarily to lead to good things coming your way. Um, especially if we're waiting with a bad attitude. Um, generally, we have a tendency to see what we're looking for. So if we're waiting and we've got a, a bad attitude in the waiting, then what we see is negative. At least that's true in my own life. If I'm waiting for something and I've got a poor attitude about it and I'm being really impatient, what I see are problems. I look around and I see there's something wrong with this and there's something wrong with this and there's something wrong with this and I'm in the waiting. I'm, I'm waiting for whatever it is that I'm waiting for, but I've, I've got a bad attitude and so I don't see good things coming my way. I see only things that are wrong with my situation or wrong with what's immediately surrounding me. And so in scripture, uh, the concept of waiting is the, the Hebrew word kava, which means to bind together by twisting, to be bound together with the object of our waiting, and to wait with expectation and hope. Um, a popular verse on waiting comes from Isaiah 40, 31. I'm sure a lot of people listening have probably heard this one. Uh, Isaiah 40, 31, it says, But those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. And perhaps a lesser known scripture that also deals with waiting is in Lamentations 3, 25. And it says, The Lord is good to those who wait for him to those who seek him. So I do believe that in the waiting, the same God who's never late is working all things out. The question is, the question that I ask myself and so I'm gonna to pose to you is, am I letting him work things out in me? Our attitude and our posture in the waiting matter. They do. Um, I believe that in the waiting, God works things out externally. And I also believe that while we wait, he prepares in advance the things that he is leading us into. So externally in the waiting, he, he's working all things out and he's preparing in advance the things that we're going to walk into, the things that are next in life. But I also believe that in the waiting, he works things out internally in us to prepare us for the things and places that he's calling us to, the, the things that are next in our life. And the external things, those are things we can leave to God and trust that he is good and, and he is working those things out. But the internal things are things that we have to respond to. And that's where our attitude in the waiting matters. That's where our attitude in the waiting comes into play. So in the waiting, how can we position ourselves to let God work things out in us? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is 
to be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And that's out of 1 Thessalonians 5:18. And so how how can you do that? How can you be thankful in all circumstances if this is God's will for you? Uh here's some here's some thoughts. Thank This is really simple. Thank you God that I'm alive today. How about thank you God for my family, my spouse, my kids, my siblings, my parents. I don't know uh, about you, but when I'm having a rough day and I'm looking around for things to be thankful for, sometimes I'm really thankful for my kids because while they are messy and slow to listen, they're also really funny and caring. And when I stop and I slow down and I'm looking for things to be thankful for, they make me laugh and I love that. Um, your spouse, there are good things to be found in your spouse. Thank you that I that I have a spouse. Um, mind blowing. You know, when we stop and think about the things that we do have in a different perspective, uh, there, there are ways that, that we can be thankful for my siblings. I'm, I have a brother who I'm really close to and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for my parents. Uh, my parents are still around and they live near me and so I'm thankful for, for those things. And that may not be uh, true in your situation, but there are things in, in your life. Here's um, some more. Thank you, God, for your forgiveness, that you love me in all of my failures. <laughs> in the waiting, when I have a bad attitude and I stop to find something to be thankful for, immediately, generally, what becomes exposed is how awful I am. <laughs> I don't know if that's true for you. Um, and so in those moments, I thank you, God, for your forgiveness and that you love me even in this yak of mine. Um, one of the things that we like to say is that we choose joy. We find something to celebrate in every situation. We find something to celebrate in every circumstance. And I'm not saying that that's easy. I'm not saying that's easy. Uh, sometimes... <laughs> Really, sometimes we need to dig deep to find those things that we're thankful for, to find that attitude of thankfulness. And I think that's the point, though. I think that's the point, is to look for what is good in the waiting. And sometimes that means digging deep to find that attitude of thankfulness or gratefulness. Uh, another thing that we can do in the waiting uh, to keep our attitude right is to give God permission to search your heart and mind for anything that grieves Him. Uh, so anything that grieves Him, what might that be? Anxiousness. We're feeling anxious about something uh, and, we're, and we're holding on tight to that and we haven't invited Him into that situation. And maybe it's not on purpose, it's just we haven't thought about God wanting to be there in the middle of our anxiousness. Um, unforgiveness. Perhaps there's people or things that have happened and in the waiting, when we think about those things or those people, there's kind of an edge of unhappiness or there's an edge of, of things that happen. And so maybe there's some forgiveness that needs to happen. Not necessarily um, that does, unforgive, forgiveness doesn't always mean that we need to go to that person. A lot of times, Forgiveness can happens in our hearts. You know, we're not waiting for someone to repent to us. We're not waiting for someone to apologize to us, but we're releasing something in our hearts uh, because we're having we're having an issue. We're having an internal struggle. Uh, another thing that grieves him is impatience. If we're being impatient and angry and on edge, uh, bitterness or, or anger. If any of those things in the waiting, if we're sensing those things, a good way um, to identify. If there are things in our life that grieve him or if there are internal things that we need to let go of in the waiting, a great indicator is quite seriously, quite honestly, is your physical body. If you are feeling tense, you're feeling stressed out, you're feeling under pressure, uh, if you feel wound up, um, those, those are things... It's an outward reflection of something that's going on on the inside of you. And so, you know, Father, I've, you know, it's, it seems, it might seem unnatural, uh, but I talk to God about everything I do. He's, he's my heavenly Father. He loves me and he, he wants me to cast all of my cares on Him. And so, Father, I'm, I'm feeling really tense 
uh, in my shoulders, I'm feeling really anxious. Can you tell me where this is coming from? Uh, and so you can ask God to help you identify um, where those emotions or feelings or you know physical physical things are coming from, and then ask Him to help you work on it. Uh, it can be a simple prayer like, God, I, f I feel tense and anxious when I think about this. I feel wrapped up in it and my physical body is responding to the tension in my mind. I do not want to be bound up by this. Will you forgive me, Lord, for becoming bound up with it? And will you grant me wisdom in what I should do next and how I can let go of this? Uh, and it, just simply taking that step of inviting him to do that if you've never done it before um, is huge, is huge. and I. He's shown up for me every time, and so I believe that, that he'll show up for you in those situations and circumstances if you if you go for it, if you ask him. <clears throat> so number three is if in the waiting, if scripturally waiting means to bind yourself up or to wrap yourself, to, to twist yourself together with the object of what it is that you're waiting for, then twist yourself together with God in the waiting. But the question is how? How do you twist yourself up with God in the waiting? Uh, so these are these are pretty simple, but read read his word. Read the Bible. Get on a Bible reading plan. If you're not on a Bible reading plan, get on one. Uh, the YouVersion Bible app, there's so many, there are so many, so many reading plans. There's short ones, long ones, devotional ones. They can become interactive, so you can share them with a friend, and it can be kind of a, a social place. So in the waiting, read read the word. Bind yourself up with him. Get to know what he sounds like. Get to know the stories. Uh, number two is put on some worship music. Put on some worship music in the waiting. The same God is never late. He's working all things out <laughs> from a Spotify playlist on vertical worship. Uh, but put, I mean, Spotify, well, if you don't have Spotify, I don't know, Pandora, you got YouTube, uh, whatever music app you're, you're using, put on some old hymns. Hymns are amazing. I actually just made a hymns list on Spotify because I was like, I love these. Uh, I also like modern contemporary music, but hymns, hymns are great. And there are playlists. There's hymns that have been redone and they're, I was going to say not so ancient, but I like them being ancient. <laughs> uh, Hillsong, Elevation, Carrie Job, Bethel, there are so many artists out there who put on some, who have created some really great worship music that's scriptural. And so it gets your eyes on Jesus and it wraps you and twists you up with the object of your waiting. And then spend time talking to God in prayer or in writing down your prayers and expressing what it is that's going on in your mind. I go in and out of seasons of writing and journaling. I know not everybody's a writer, so I'm not saying, yeah, to write things down. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, you know, you might be an, an out loud processor or an internal processor. However it is that you process, invite God into that. Uh, so if it's writing, don't write dear diary, but dear God or heavenly father, Jesus. Uh, and, and if you're praying or if you're just talking, if you're talking out loud to yourself or you're talking in your mind to yourself, invite Jesus uh, into that. So it's not just you trying to work things out in your own mind, but hey, God, this is what I'm thinking about. And just, I mean, it's so simple. It's just a simple, hey, God. But when, when your brain shifts to, oh yeah, God's there and I can talk to him about that, he can come in and he can work things out in your mind that you in your own mind, you are never going to get there. You're just never going to get there. Uh, so invite him in and then read a book. Read a book by an author who talks about waiting. How to wait with God. There, there are a lot of great authors out there. A few uh, that I've read and I, I really loved. There, there's A.W. Tozer. He's a an older fellow. Uh, Dallas Willard is another one. Kind of philosophical, but I really, really enjoy what he's written. Uh, Brendan Manning, he's a fun one. Uh, Erwin McManus, also a great author. Uh, so in the waiting, our attitude matters in the waiting. And so those are a couple of things you can do. Those are things that that I've been thinking about. I'd love to, to pray with you before we hop off this midweek mentor. Uh, Father, I thank you that in the waiting, you really are working all things out and you are never late. Father, I ask that you would grant us wisdom and self-control by your spirit to keep our hearts and minds right 
and fix on you and your promises in the waiting. You desire to work things out for our good. And so, Father, let us be on mission and in submission to what you would do in us in the waiting. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, everybody. Love you guys. See you later.